Well, this is new. We're trying something new this month. We are doing a monthly recap for August. So talking about some of the board games and experiences I had in the month of August. So I'm excited to get into it, talk about some great games, maybe some games that aren't so great because I'm gonna be doing it through talking about them as either yays, nays, or maybes. So follow along in the comments or in your head and guess what each of these games is gonna be for me in those three categories. So three categories, yay is a game that either if it's in my collection, it's staying forever, it's great, or if it's outside of my collection, it's immediately at the top of my wish list. If it's a maybe, it's either I'm thinking about getting rid of it, I don't know. If I don't have it, maybe I get it someday. I liked it, but I don't know if I liked it enough. And a nay is it's just not for me. Maybe it's not for my collection. Still could be a good game, probably not a great game. Or it could be, honestly, a, a pretty terrible game. With all that being said, let's get into my games for the month of August. First game in the month of August is a brand new social deduction game, two years in the making, called Blood on the Clock Tower. Now, I love social deduction games. I had a whole top 10 on them. And I love this theme of an old town and there is a demon. I don't necessarily love demons, but I love the idea of a killer running around just murking people and you trying to discover uh, who it is. And what I was intrigued by in this game was I heard that you could pull people aside and have side conversations, that if you died, you kept playing, and that every role had an ability. And it intrigued me, but it looked like it could be a little bit too much. So, on the count of three, I'm going to say yay, nay, maybe. Three, two, one. It was a yay for me. I love this game. I got to play it online first, then I tried it with Max and Doolin from Table Knots twice in person like three games each. So I've played probably like 10 games of this, probably six games in person. And it is incredible. It's good online, but it is amazing in person. I was so excited this last time my wife Claire got to experience it. And it's just such a unique game because there's so much logic to it. Unlike a typical social deduction where someone's like, this guy's sketchy, whatever. You can actually logic it out, but some of the information can be wrong. You can be drunk, you can be poisoned. You can be a lunatic who thinks he's evil and he's not actually evil. And it has led to some hilarious moments of people racing around trying to get side conversations and the clock running out, you having to make an accusation, crazy reveals. This last game we thought we got the demon. Turns out it was just a guy who thought he was the demon the whole time and all the other evil people were messing with him. And it is just an amazing, amazing game. So I pre-ordered it for the next shipment, top of my wish list. I'm getting it soon. Blood on the clock tower. Next game is a game called Catacombs. And what intrigued me about this game was, unlike a lot of dungeon crawls, which I like the idea of, but a lot of times they're just like way too generic fantasy, or they're kind of dark, which I don't really care for. Or sometimes they can kind of be super long and complicated, but this game looked dope because it involved flicking discs as your heroes trying to hit the villains, and it seemed to be light, easy, you could play it in one go. And just so unique that all of the monsters and the heroes were these flicking discs. And I don't actually have any flicking dexterity game. I have a few stacking. So I, I wanted that flicking dexterity game that seemed to be missing in my collection. So did it do it? Three, two, one. It is a maybe. I don't know. It's on the edge. See, I enjoyed my play of it. So I played with my friend Wells, just me and him, 1v1. So he had all the heroes, I had all the evil people. And typically, you're supposed to play up to five where each good person gets their own hero and the evil person still controls all the bad guys. But it seemed like two would be the best way to play it because it seems like if you only got one or two heroes, that wouldn't be as much to do. And I liked it, but it was pretty long. It was easy, but there's like so many different statuses and monsters and setup that it just seemed to be a big experience with two people, very unique, and I liked it, but I just don't know how often I would play this game. So, I think I'm getting rid of it, but I would totally be down to play it again. I'd give it like a seven and a half out of 10. I would give Blood on the Clock Tower a nine. Oh man, maybe a nine and a half. So yeah, I still liked Catacombs, just too unique of an experience. So yeah, it's a maybe. My next game is The Quest. For El Dorado by Reiner Knizia, who, if you don't know, is like this huge dude in board games. He's like a mathematician or something. I don't know. But he's made like a bajillion games. And he made this game, the art's cool, the adventuring theme, love that. And I love racing games. I got Jamaica, Downforce, Camel Up. I love any of those racing games. 
So I was interested in this. I like deck building, and that was the whole thing. It's a deck building racing game. So I was excited to try it. Did it live up to the hype? Benny! Did it live up to the hype? Three, two, one. Ben! All right, the quest for El Dorado. Yay, nay, or maybe three, two, one. It was an A. I was surprised. I love deck building. I love racing games. And I did like it, but it just, because of the deck building, which was cool, it didn't seem as fast paced or as much of like a party game as Camel Up, Downforce, and Jamaica are. I think as all those games have some sort of either gambling betting element or like Jamaica, you're attacking each other in ships. They just make it more chaotic and like party and fun. And this is probably more strategic than those games, but it was a good racing game, but just not enough to fit in my collection with so many good racing games. So I'd give it a seven out of 10. Uh, I enjoyed it, I'd like to try it again. And yeah, Quest for El Dorado, and then. Next game I'm gonna be talking about is Star Wars Outer Rim from Fantasy Flight Games. I was excited for this game because I was looking for my Star Wars board game. Imperial Assault was once again a dungeon crawl. Looked like it took too long campaign. Nope. Uh, Star Wars Rebellion looked super complicated. Nope. Uh, all the other ones are like trading card games where you gotta collect a bunch of stuff. Not here for that. But this game was like sandbox. You just run around the galaxy getting bounties, building up your ship, going on missions and adventures. And I thought it was for me. But I was hesitant. It said it was only really good two or three players or solo, which I don't really play that much. And it was three hours long and a bit more complicated. And I was like, oh. So I finally got around to playing it. What did I think? Three, two, one. It was a yay, 100%. This game shocked me how fun it was. Because I was so intimidated by the time length and the complexity that it said it had. And yet, it was really easy once you got it down to it. And the turns were really quick. I think you can adjust how many points you're going to, so you can make the game shorter, but the turns are actually really quick for such a long game. And I just love the open world nature. You're pretty much just running around these worlds, either delivering stuff, shooting stuff, or going on adventures. And I loved it. It was so, so good. I would give it an eight and a half. I'm excited to play it again. Excited to get the expansion, Unfinished Business. Definitely staying in my collection. Star Wars Outer Rim. Next game is a game called True Colors. It came very recommended from some board game podcasts and YouTubes that I like. Actual L had it, and I love him because he's British and hilarious and likes party games. And so I was excited to try it, and it was all about saying who in the friend group would do a certain thing or be the most likely to do a certain thing, and I love that idea. I tried it. What did I think? Three, two, one. It was actually a nay for me. I, I I liked it. It was fine. It was kind of like fine. I think I need to play with a group of people that know each other better. I played it with a group of people that knew each other but not super well. And I think that's where the humor would really come from, saying who's who in a category. But a lot of times it's just like, oh, it's obviously this person or it's like, I don't know. And then they just pick a random person. So maybe better crowd, better environment. I give it like a six. I can see the potential and I love the idea of it, but it was an A for me. Truth bombs. I'm sorry, that game was true colors. <laughs> All those times I said truth bombs, true colors. All right. My final game is, before I get into that, please like, comment, subscribe. I love talking to you guys in the comments. I always want to answer questions and hear suggestions from you guys based on the games I played. And it truly means the world to me that so many people have watched and subscribe. I, it honestly baffles me. Wasn't expecting this. And I love doing this. So yeah, thank you guys. All right, my last game is a very new game called Acropolis, very similar to Cascadia, which is renowned and these cool colored tiles. You're trying to build combos and build up a Greek city, which I love that theme. Was it a yay, nay, or maybe? Three, two, one. It was a may bay. I don't know yet. So I, the thing is with this game, I liked it. I thought it was good. And I have no game like that, the tile lane and the comboing. But I want to try Cascadia first to see if I like that more. And I do feel like that's a niche I don't have in my collection. I don't think it's necessarily my favorite type of game. I, I really lean towards either really thematic games, experience games, or just like easier party social deduction games. 
And it's just kind of like a gateway strategy game. And I liked it. I give it a seven and a half. I did terrible at it, so I'd like to try it again. And that is my final game for this month. I'm gonna catch you guys on the flip side.